Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our broadcast. Of course, this will be airing both on Israeli News Live as a prophetic segment of the broadcast today, as well as uh, Danoon Institute. You can find uh, Danoon Institute's YouTube channel inside the description below. Uh, so I think it's important you subscribe there because this is where we do in-depth teaching. And I'm talking about some in-depth things that we're going to be going into in the very days coming ahead here that will not be shared here on Israeli News Live. Um, <clears throat> but I really want to get into this. Uh, of course, these are some older articles that I'm going to share with you today because I'm wanting to look at the the whole scope of things and how things are happening around the world. This article here, for example, Britain to send hundreds more troops to Russia's border as Cold War tensions escalate across Europe. Uh, we have um, Democrats warn State Department of potential Trump witch hunts. Uh, we see the Middle East analysis. Obama will leave office with the Middle East in ruins. Uh, we see here Clinton blames Putin's personal beef with her for election hacking. Now, Here's what's the, the whole sum of the matter here when I look at this is that there is such a major division in the world today and we're talking about even divisions within countries themselves like America, Trump and Clinton at each other's throats but most people have no idea that they're actually cousins. Didn't know that, did you? Yeah, they're actually cousins is what they are and that's uh, uh, Stephen Pigeon, Dr. Stephen Pigeon shared that with us here. Uh, on his, uh, actually on uh, my wife's channel, Rise Up Children of God, in a special interview about Obama, uh, but he goes into that issue there about them being cousins. Uh, but the, the point is, is that there is such a division. And we see, the, of course, as the biblical prophecy goes over here in Matthew 24, nation should ri would rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Let me kind of just blow this up so we get it big enough for you to see here. The famous scripture in Matthew 24 uh, where it says, and Jesus answered and said to them, they're asking what would be the sign of his coming, the end of the world, etc. It says, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when he says that the many shall come in his name and say they are Christ, you really have to think about how many people run around saying that they're Jesus, or Yeshua, whatever the case may be. You don't really see many. A few little flukes and quacks that everybody knows are flukes and quacks. But the thing is, as they come in his name saying that I am Christ, I am the anointed, is what they're saying. And many people do. That's just not limited. I'm not going to throw stones on the Catholic Church on this one here, even though every pope claims to be the successor of Peter and also the one that sits in the seat or in the stead of Yeshua in his authority. There's your many right there. But even beyond the Vatican, beyond the Catholic Church and the way that they do things, we have many people today with every type of cult you can imagine that is raised up over the years claiming to be the anointed of God and they are the mouthpiece of God, right? So he says, For many shall come in my name, saying that I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So as the modern age began, we have seen wars and, of course, rumors of wars. It's a little bit different than the nation rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, which we're going to read about next. So keep that in mind. And where do we get this technology? Many people believe it's alien technology. Well, what is really aliens to begin with? Aliens are demons. These are your fallen angels that have, whether they have clone themselves, bodies, whatever the case may be. I know there's all kinds of ideas out there of how the aliens actually ended up with uh, physical bodies that they live in, but nonetheless, they have bodies. And of course, we do know, according to the book of Enoch, they, uh, they cohabitated with man, and there were giants born unto them. These fallen angels actually did this. Now, the floods supposedly killed them all off, but we find the giants also on the uh, you know, post-Andalubian uh, destruction as well, which kind of begs the question is, how did they get here? Uh, nonetheless, there are giants, and even, uh, in fact, I'm trying to get John B. Wells, uh, former Coast to Coast host, on here with us on Israeli News Live, uh, because John shared with me the other day when we were on his program, which I totally forgot to let you guys know about that. Go back and, and, and check out with John B. Wells on uh, Caravan to Midnight. We were on his program, uh, and we're actually going to be, we'll be looking at going on there as a frequent guest very near in the future there. I'm wanting to get John over here as well. But anyway, John shared with me about the soldiers 
that have actually spoke about killing a giant. Uh, in, in modern times, a man some 12, 12 feet tall uh, over in Afghanistan. So there are some really things here that are, that are very serious and very real, and these are things that we're wanting to bring to your attention as well, that Satan is real, and there are beings that are definitely influenced and no doubt incarnated with demons on this earth today. But here's where it gets interesting. It says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. We're seeing the famines, we're seeing the earthquakes, we're seeing the pestilences. We're even seeing nation rising against nation now, and kingdom against kingdom. Now, I have always kind of held to the idea that the kingdom against kingdom would be like the Saudi kingdom against maybe the United Kingdom. All right? This has been kind of my thought there. But I actually began to take a different look at this recently in regards to the fact that the Father has been revealing to me about DNA, about what's encoded on our DNA. And then I remembered a very famous scripture also in the book of Matthew, about a dozen, about a dozen, dozen chapters before we get to Matthew 24, we had Matthew 12. And what's interesting in Matthew 12, uh, the, the question comes up here, they're accusing Yeshua of casting out devils by the spirit of Beelzebub. Now watch what he says. And all the people were amazed and said, Is it not this the son of David, speaking of Yeshua, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus then uh, knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. That could be a message for America in itself there. Right now, both Republicans and Democrats are very much divided against themselves. And if they remain this way, they will not stand. America will fall into chaos, into civil strife. That is something that is without question. But anyway... Not to mention, uh, even though Donald Trump is very much adamant against Hillary Clinton, you have to remember they are cousins. Dr. Stephen Pigeon brought that out uh, on one of our broadcasts here. Uh, so anyway, what do we have here? Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself it shall not stand. So Satan actually has a kingdom. And we have to realize there, there is supposed to come a time where Satan will be destroyed, and his kingdom will be destroyed. Well, the only way for his kingdom to be destroyed is for his kingdom to be divided. That's what Yeshua is actually, in a roundabout way, is alluding to. But see, at that time, Yeshua knew his kingdom was not going to fold. But notice the words, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Then again, we think about the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. And of course, Jesus, Yeshua there, refers to that as well. So he says, if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Now think about that. If Satan were to cast out Satan, that lets us know there are demons living in human bodies. And of course, Satan is not going to start casting out those demons in those bodies because they are the elite of the world. They are the ones that control the governments of the world. Remember, he took Jesus up on a high pinnacle, or excuse me, a high mountain, and he showed him all the kingdoms that ever were and all the kingdoms that ever would be and promised him that he would give them to him if he would bow down and worship him. How could he give them to Yeshua? How could Yeshua live so long to have every one of these kingdoms? Well, somewhere along the way, I believe his kingdom will be divided. I think this is what we're seeing in the world today when it says Britain to send hundreds more troops to Russia's border, Cold War tensions and escalate. We see the situation, Clinton blaming Putin when she was actually a very close friend of Putin at one time and Putin gave her a lot of money. When we see Donald Trump and Clinton bashing at each other's throats and yet they're actually family uh, and he's talking about throwing her in jail. Now, of course, he's kind of recanted on that, but nonetheless, there is so much division among the elites of the world that is starting to look like, to me, Middle Eastern ruins, uh, Democrats warn State Department of potential Trump witch hunts. These are the elites of the world and the elites puppet masters that are in, or excuse me, they're the puppet masters, but the ones that are in the governments of the world, they, of course, elites are their puppet masters, but nonetheless, they're starting to be divided like never before. So what do we have here? 
if nation is rising against nation, which is the physical that we're seeing in the world today, that's the Putins, the Trumps, the, uh, the Obamas, the Assad, uh, the 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 uh, you know Netanyahu's of the world, the the uh, Prime Minister Xi, etc. All these different government leaders around the world are at each other's throats all the time now. Now we know there's always been wars and rumors of wars, as the Bible said. But what happens is a different situation here. Up here it says, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. But when it's when nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, Satan itself is beginning to divide. And what's happening is that wars that we're seeing, remember the wars that are on earth are only wars that are playing out in another dimension. So now Satan's kingdom is starting to divide and of course it will come to a desolation without question. Now here's what's interesting. At the very time that all this is happening, we see in Micah chapter 7 here, let me kind of get that a little bit bigger on your screen so you can see that a little bit better as well. Micah chapter 7 begins to prophesy of the coming of one of the witnesses there. And I find it very interesting. Uh, and it says here, there, there shall be a day when they shall come unto you from Assyria, even to the cities of Egypt, from Egypt, even to the river, and from the sea and sea, and from mountain and mountain. That's the attack that will happen on Israel. But if you notice, though, what's very fascinating about what, what is written right here is that everybody is coming against Israel suddenly, right? But then he tells you in verse 13, a time frame of when that, that attack on Israel will happen. And the land shall be desolate, which land? The land of Assyria. Shall be desolate for them that dwell therein because of the fruit of their doings. Now, it doesn't even say the Assyrians. It's those that are dwelling therein. So, I kind of agree with President Bashar al-Assad when Assad actually makes the statement, it's not really a civil war. He said you can't call uh, mercenaries that have been shipped in a civil war. But they are living there, they are dwelling in there, and the fruit of their doings, they were brought in as mercenaries. Uh, and of course there are some Syrians that are fighting with them as well, part of this uprising against the Assad government. So it is somewhat to a degree a civil strife there. And the land has become desolate. Not so much that we have millions and millions of Syrian refugees all over the world right now, but the fact that they have bombed the land into nothing but rubble. But look at all the nations that are sitting there over in Assyria. Modern day Assyria, which by the way includes northwest Iraq and the country of Syria. And that's where all they are. Americans and the Iraqis are in northwest over there. The Iranians, the, 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 the Russians, the, uh, uh, the Lebanese, all of them are fighting inside of Syria along with the Assad's forces. And of course Egypt, all the other countries. Eventually they're all going to come against Israel. And it's going to happen at a time when the land is desolate, which is what we see now. But... Then we find a fascinating, fascinating prophecy here, and this is what I want to get to. And this is something that really bugged me for a long time. In Hebrew it says, Ro'e ama em amcha, okay, which means to shepherd your people. Ro'e is from the word from the sheep itself. Uh, Zion is the word for sheep, but Ro'e is what Moses did. Moses was a shepherd, and he would shepherd the sheep. But in this case here, he says, Ro'e amcha, shepherd your people, or tend thy people is the way they translate it here. But it says, Beshebetecha, which is an interesting word right here, Beshebetecha, or Techa, Beshebetecha, all right, You're there. he's to shepherd them with his staff, all right, Zion Nechalotecha Shevni Levadad, all right, but it's, a, it's an interesting staff here. The word Mate is what we use for the word the staff that Moses actually had when he came out of Egypt. But in this case here, this particular man here is to shepherd the children of Israel with the staff. It doesn't even say the children of Israel. It just says your people. All right? With the staff of your heritage. All right? And I find that very interesting because this is another thing that God finally revealed to me because I couldn't understand what it is. It's actually like the staff of your genealogy. All right. And then he says that dwell solitarily as a forest in the midst of the fruitful field. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. But before I break this down to you, let me just share something with you here. 
Go to verse 15 and 16. As in the days of thy coming forth out of the land of Egypt, I will show unto him marvelous things. All right? Nephilot. Nephilot is like wonders. It's amazing. It's miracles like never seen before, right? The nations shall see and be put to shame for all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouths. Their ears shall be deaf. Now that's interesting. Their might. It's not talking about Israel's might. It is talking about, I believe personally, this is speaking of your two witnesses that are coming. The Revelation speaks of. The Zechariah speaks of. That Obadiah speaks of. The saviors in the very last verse there that should come up on the Mount of Zion to deliver the people there and judge the Mount of Esau, which is Rome, inside of Israel. But they come with such a powerful wonders that the earth just begins to shake, that even the military might wakes up. But keep in mind, it's nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Satan's kingdom is now divided, and they're fighting one another. But what happens? Suddenly, while all this is going on, while the nations are against nations, it's a kingdom, and they're, the devils are fighting one another, and because the devils are fighting in another dimension against each other, as we call them aliens, uh, what the and one of see what it is they're fighting for power over who's going to come and be the Messiah to Israel. Israel, that's not going to be your Messiah. The Pope of Rome is trying to bring you a Messiah. Kirill is trying to bring you a Messiah. Everybody's trying to bring Israel a Messiah. Okay, and that's why there is a struggle on who's going to be the nation that gets to declare to Israel that their alien God is coming down and this is their Messiah. Putin says to, says to America, tells Obama, tell them about the aliens or we will. The, the Pope of Rome says, get ready for, for looking at the Bible in a way you never looked at it before. And if Martians come, I'm willing to baptize them. Man, you guys, we got to wake up, right? Wake up is right. 90% of your DNA, they say, is junk DNA, which is a complete lie. 90% of your DNA has got all the ancestral history all the way back to the beginning from Adam. And let me tell you something. If you can unlock that part of your DNA, if you can wake up to who you really are, and I think that's what happens with the two witnesses. The two witnesses are here now. They're on this earth now. They're about ready for God to do something with them. I don't even know if they know who they are. The point is, is that when they wake up, What's going to happen? Something's going to turn on inside of them. That's why God says to, to, to this one here, and I believe this is a representation of Moses because he says, he likens it to going out of Egypt, right? Tend thy people with thy staff. So his people happens to be Israel. So he says, tend thy people or shepherd your people with your staff. But in Hebrew, that's a very odd staff right there. It is a staff that is dealing with genealogy. So how does he tend the people with his staff of his genealogy, the, the flock of his heritage? I think God has given a subliminal message maybe right here in the Bible. It was hidden from Satan, so Satan couldn't figure out what it was. In other words, that witness wakes up to who he is. And his DNA, that 90% comes to life. When it comes to life, it's his direct descendant whether he's a direct descendant of Moses, which is my thought. Remember, I shared with you a little while back over in the Assumption of Moses, where Moses says, says to Joshua, take these books that I have written and hide that in an earthen vessel from the foundation of the world that was made from the foundation of the world. The only earthen vessel that was made from the foundation of the world was Adam, mankind. What is he saying? As I said to you, the Father revealed to me that God, every time you speak, every word you say is encoded on your DNA like a magnetic tape, but it's passed on from one child to the next to the next because you get your ancestors' DNA. Everything in the Bible speaks of this. It says in there in Deuteronomy, it says, why would you go across the sea to look for the Word of God? Why do you go, why are you going and digging in the earth for the Word of God? Like down in, you know, Qumran? I appreciate the scrolls that are found in Qumran, but Moses asked the question God is asking, why do you keep looking here and there when the word of God is nigh you, even in you, on your lips, in your mouth, and in your heart? 
And yet we find out from transplants that when they put a human heart into another subject, that news recipient gets the memories of the other person. And they, in science, after God revealed this to me, I did a lot of research online. Science says that the heart can physically think before the brain can and cause and they work together. Little girl, seven years old, gets a transplant patient's heart. There's another little girl, 10 years old, that died. She was murdered. She got the heart. The little girl started having nightmares. When she would come out, she saw the girl's murder, saw the murderer, saw what he wore, what he did, what he said, what the little girl said before she died, and the police used it to convict the man and put him to prison. Found him and convicted him and put him to prison. It's all around you scientifically. It is written in the Bible. The sins of, you know, are passed down from generation to generation. Diseases are passed from generation to generation. Wake up, friends. And I think this is what's going to wake us up. And not only that, if we wake up to, when the two witnesses are woke, when they wake up, that's what will send a shock into this earth here that will wake up the rest of those that can be woken up. And then you will realize who you are. And then Satan will have no hold on you. People talk about a rapture. That's what it takes to have a real rapture. Wake up to who you are. If you wake up to who you are, then you will also know that God made you an eternal being. You are an eternal being. That soul in you has the ability to return to God. All that the Father has given me, Jesus said, shall come to me, and none of them will be left out. Think about that. But we know not everybody's going to make it, don't we? Maybe the Father didn't give him all of them. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment, Denoon Institute of Biblical Research. By the way, if we, these works are a blessing to you and you'd like to support this work, please consider doing so. You can do so at IsraeliNewsLive.org and IsraelReturns.com.